mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven. player piano, an ingenious example of human inventiveness. Thousands of intricate mechanical parts producing music as the masters performed it. But technology and imagination were already giving man other ears, and soon the players would become remnants of a passing era. An attic, a place for remnants, things put away and forgotten, or old things waiting to be discovered again, to be used in new ways, in different settings. At one time, houses and cities everywhere had attics, but with time, the houses themselves became remnants. A city, a human invention, expressing human ideas, traditions, attitudes, activities, objects, the result of human growth, projected in this special way only by humans. A city, like the mind which conceived it, is full of remnants, shells, pieces of the past, forms the present has outgrown. Some cities die and become ruins, remnants of a civilization. Even within a still living city, Parts are pushed aside to make way for new ones. People are ambivalent about memories, unsure how to look at them. Are they antiques, reminders of treasured memories? Or are they discards, too easy to forget? What do remnants tell us about ourselves and those who lived before us? How were they like us? How different? Are we better off? Or did they have some secret that we do not? From a practical standpoint, remnants are important sources of knowledge about people. A civilization leaves clues to what it was, what it tried to become.
The ruins of ancient civilizations contain artifacts which were made and used. From ancient Greece, a vase for someone's grave. Or someone's funeral mask. Or delicate earrings worn centuries ago on some Etruscan ears. Or some image signifying reverence. The scant fragments excavated from mounds of earth or unburial sites, such as these from pre-Columbian people in Central America, provide missing links in the puzzle to know who we are and what we came from. Because these things are often just fragments, we must reconstruct a picture of the culture which produced them. What was this cave painting of 20,000 years ago? Was it part of a magic ritual in the hunt for food? or a celebration of tribal power. Perhaps this early Eskimo sculpture represents the artist's belief that the animal's spirit could be trapped within the sculpture. But the real meaning of such artifacts is hidden, since no written records of the people who made them survive. Yet together, they provide clues to our past, for those who can read them. Runes are one kind of addict from the past. What causes runes? First, the forces of nature. Man also makes ruins. Wars and revolutions, the result of hatred or fear of others, resulted in countless ruins. or neglect can cause ruins. Around the 16th century, castles became useless for their primary purpose of defense and were abandoned. How many buildings in your own city have suffered the same fate? Changes in taste and technology cause abandonment or neglect. This was a kind of temple at one time, to a god of transportation. At the turn of the century, America rediscovered the wheel, and the railroads made everything a little closer in time and space. But technology was already giving us the wings we dreamed of for so long. Like the covered wagons that the railroads unwheeled, once grand terminals would soon be abandoned, as technology put people on the roads and in the sky. Technology influenced the change in taste as well. Once magnificent mansions have been left to decay when new styles of architecture and of living have made them seem old-fashioned, unattractive, and unwanted.
Ruins can also result from economic and social changes. Sometimes people were chased away or migrated elsewhere, as the ancient ruins of Teotihuacan in Mexico suggest. About 2,000 years ago, it flourished as the first and most elaborate city in the Americas. Its magnificent pyramids surrounded by plazas, markets, and housing for perhaps 100,000 people. We don't know who the people were or what happened to them when they vanished 1,400 years ago. They left nothing but the ruins of their civilization, which the Aztecs discovered in the 12th century, naming it Teotihuacan, the place of the gods. Spaniards found ruins such as Teotihuacan, and what building materials they failed to scavenge for their own churches, the jungle eventually swallowed and almost digested. Conquerors seldom respect the artifacts of those they defeat, sometimes destroying them, denying their makers an identity to turn against their new masters. In Egypt, from this great pyramid at Giza, the Muslim conquerors removed the polished limestone block casing to build their mosques. Even so, after 5,000 years, the six and one half million tons of limestone block stands as a silent, mysterious tribute to the ancient minds which conceived it. We all recognize this famous ruin, the Parthenon of ancient Greece, but in its present state, one would hardly know that it was once a symbol of civic pride and inspiration for the citizens of Athens. This close recreation in Nashville, Tennessee, suggests the original splendor. Except for minor encroachments of weather and time, the Parthenon stood as this one does today. For 2,000 years, it survived earthquakes and storms. But in 1687, the Turks, who then occupied Greece, used it to store ammunition and the explosion from a random bomb left it in ruins. In more recent times, many grand plantations fell into picturesque but sad neglect when the Civil War put an end to the slave-based economy. This plantation house, a well-preserved remnant, is a grim reminder of a time when people held others in human bondage. Century-old photographs have frozen such moments in time. Today, the same tabby houses where slaves lived recede quietly in the vegetation, like painful memories dulled by time. Remnants can stir old memories or inspire new ideas as people try to recreate something they have seen or improve something they have used. Leonardo da Vinci, 1498. Salvador Dali, 1955. Remnants, runes, relics are like attics, intrusions of the past into the present, links that join the past to the future. For many reasons, remnants have been a source of fascination to artist and poet, scientist and philosopher, but it was not always so. During the Middle Ages, many people were indifferent to the remnants from pagan times which surrounded them. Their first concern was survival in the present while preparing for a better life after death. They constructed walls for protection and sometimes to shut the world out. What we now see as the beauty of classical architecture was not always visible to eyes focused on heaven. And yet, the Middle Ages produced its own special kind of attic. The monasteries, where many works of the ancient world were preserved for future generations. Illuminated or illustrated manuscripts, such as these, were products of the monasteries, 
and represent years of painstaking work by monks who copied them by hand. They reflect not only their love of beauty, but unequaled craftsmanship as well. Part of any cultural addict is history, remembering the past and discovering new ways to interpret it. In 16th century paintings, artists use remnants for traditional settings like the nativity, or to suggest symbolically the dull pagan culture in contrast to the bright new world of a triumphant church. With the flowering of the humanistic point of view, beginning in the Renaissance in the 15th century, people began to take interest in classical Roman ruins and later those of Greece. To many, such ruins represented visible evidence of a culture they wished to revive, a culture which seemed to suggest renewed confidence in man as the maker and shaper of human destiny. By contrast, buildings of the preceding era were looked down on. They were called Gothic, a way of joining them to the Goths who were considered barbarians because they had destroyed Rome. Gothic buildings were often abandoned or changed to reflect new ideas and tastes. This 18th century painting of the Roman Pantheon, built in the second century AD and still studied today, illustrates the Romans mastery of the arch the vault and the dome. It was this kind of remnant which inspired architects from the 15th century on to adapt these principles for their own design. In such ways, inspired or even repelled by old ideas, the mind generates a new perception. For the mind is the most special kind of addict, a mosaic of experiences waiting to be beckoned from sleep. For centuries, people believed the Earth the center of the universe. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus, clergyman, mathematician, astronomer, began a revolution of ideas with his observations that the Sun, not the Earth, is the center of our solar system. In 1609, Galileo Galilei, fired by the vision of Copernicus, became the first to view the universe through a telescope and to see planets and suns which no other human being in his time had seen. In 1571, Johannes Kepler would discover the elliptical orbits of the planets. In 1666, Isaac Newton would explain why they orbit as they do. By 1781, William Herschel would prove that those same laws apply beyond the vast distances of the Milky Way itself. And in 1916, Albert Einstein would introduce man to the relativity of time, motion, and distance, revealing new possibilities of a universe which, for so long, has seemed impossible to comprehend. In every human being is a built-in urge to explore and, in exploring, to leave some trace, some sign that we were here. Built into us, inherent perhaps within the genes themselves, is a restlessness propelling us toward future possibilities, sometimes awesome, frightening, yet beautiful. Not every human remnant is likely to find new uses. Here is a future antique, an oil-powered energy plant. Its fuel, the byproduct of fossilized remains, remnants of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth. We 
have learned much and with knowledge have destroyed much. But we have created too. Perhaps now, knowledge will open new paths to survival. This is someone's conception of a lunar colony, once an imaginary vision of science fantasy, now an imminent scientific possibility. Eventually, other colonies will allow man to live in space, mine its limitless resources, harness its energy to benefit mankind. Self-contained environments with their own atmosphere, gravity, their own rivers and bridges. This colony, a mile in diameter, will support 10,000 people. Its shell protected against space radiation by a shield of moon rocks and slag. Eventually, advanced models, four miles wide and 20 miles long, could support 20 million people. Even within the lifespan of a person born today, solar power satellites will generate electricity from the sun to an energy limited world. And a time may come when these cities in space become remnants, like the Earth's ancient cities. In some distant time, what questions must remnants raise in the minds of those who discover them? What about today's recreations? Tomorrow's attics? What kind of inspiration or lesson or visual delight will they in turn provide to future generations.